part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Welcome into the Orange is Orange Cleveland Browns podcast. I am Holly, he is Tyvis, and we have a bye week special this week. Uh, we have a reoccurring guest. He's now an official friend of the show, my friend, my teammate, but like officially an Orange or- or- the Orange is Orange weekly, bi weekly, Contrib- semi weekly contributor. Monthly. Contributor, yes. <laughs> Um, we have the general back on the pod, uh, ESPN Cleveland Browns analyst. Again, like I said, proud to call him my teammate, Mr. Tony Grossi. Tony, welcome back. Thank you. Um, do I get swag for being a repeat guest? You know you what's also, funny? You also Time, gear. <laughs> Time, we, so, uh, Tony, I have a press play podcast sweatshirt and like, like a really nice, like Yeti really? that I got. Yeah, Tyvis, and you you started after me, so Tyvis doesn't even have any press play podcast gear. No, I got a I got a Yeti. Right? I got a Yo, small you did Yeti. get one. A little oh, small Yeti one. cup. I got that. But uh, as far as the sweatshirt and all that jazz, no, no, no. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's uh, I'm not big time like you yet. Hope one day I gotta climb the ladder. <laughs> well, get in line behind Tyvis is in the mail. It's in the mail. <laughs> Grossy's got a um uh, Grossy, yeah, you got to get behind Tyvis, I guess. Sorry on the swag. Yeah, all right. Well, get it to Tyvis, and then it'll roll downhill to me. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, well, we, yeah, we will definitely make that happen. All right, so, uh, Tony, lots to unpack here this week. I think it's a good week to have you on, um, especially for early bye week for the Browns. But I think it's, uh, for me, this was an interesting, a very interesting week game and obviously incredibly ugly right but it's it's really off-putting for me I feel like you know this season has been you know no excuses there's so much riding on it you know each week is a must win especially with a divisional game but this game you know was really lost before it even started um you know the news about Deshaun coming in the 11th hour game plan not really changing you know, the Browns have had issues with adjusting in general when they need to, not ever having a lot of depth. I mean, the Ravens had a laundry list of players out. Um, we just seemed really ill-prepared, and it didn't even feel like we really cared. It was a, It's a weird, and for me, it just doesn't sit well, and it makes me feel like, is there something else underlying? Is, is the Deshaun thing a thing? Are you worried about where the Browns are right now? Because I feel like this is such a pivotal moment with the organization and the and the way that the season's going that if they don't make the right adjustments it's gonna i'm afraid it's gonna go off the rails again uh wow there's a lot to chew on there holly i know (laughs) um you know you you said the uh, uh the game was lost before it ever began i can make the case it was lost on august 24th when the browns traded josh dobbs for a fifth round draft pick and anointed uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson as the number two quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, no one could foresee Watson needing a replacement this early in the season, but Tyvis knows anything can happen in the NFL. You're the backup quarterback. You're, you're, you know, you're one play away from being the starting quarterback. And I thought that was an un- unnecessary risk to trade a guy who was perfect for the job and wanted to be here was cheap. Um, uh, uh, you know, just to make to promote a, a draft pick who uh, had his moments in preseason, but clearly should not have been given the role of a number two quarterback for a team with real, you know, division title aspirations. So I think, I think the game was lost then and, and, you know, then the late scratch and the and the unpreparedness, it, it just became a clown show. 
against the worst possible opponent. Um, division game at home against the team in first place. And to put that out there really to me was more than just a one game setback. It, it was a psychological blow to the organization, to the players and to their fans. Uh, it, the game is too important to, to, to rest on the shoulders of a fifth round rookie quarterback. You know, Tony, when you look at, when you look at this team, Obviously, the defense has gotten a lot better this year. Um, special teams, I think, ranks in the somewhere like I think top 10, maybe six. But the Browns offense, the one thing that didn't change was they still have Kevin Stefanski as the play caller and the AVP is still the OC, but they rank 30th right now. You know, is that what did what does that mean? Like for moving forward or and does Kevin Stefanski have a lot to worry about? Well, Tigers, I thought, though, uh, Watson's third game against Tennessee gave me a lot of hope that th th this thing was turning the corner offensively, and him particularly. And, and, then, and then he had the setback and couldn't, couldn't play again against Baltimore. But, but I, I thought, you know, had he been able to play in Baltimore, I think he would have added to that pretty good performance in Tennessee – and, and they'd have been on their way. But now this, you know, missing, missing, a, <laughs> missing a game is a big setback. Uh, and, and they, you know, the, losing Chubb is a big setback. Uh, they're, they're scrambling offensively now. And they need continuity at quarterback for sure. And Watson's got to take charge and take command and, and start – and given back uh, for what uh, they've given him, uh, the investment they've made in him. So there's still enough time for the offense to get it together. Uh, and I thought I thought the Tennessee game gave us hope that that could happen. Tony, why do you think, you know, in the two games post-Chubb, they've rushed the ball 56 times for 171 yards, about a little over three-yard average. So why do you feel – why did they risk leaving – the Browns shorthanded like this with Watson to miss a game. What what was the thought process behind? I mean, did they really think that DTR was going to be able to hold his own or did it? It almost feels like they just didn't care. I mean, and, and that's, that's scarier than I think than anything. Yeah. Holly, I, I think there's a disconnect between the general manager who made the trade and the coaching staff. I, I, I've said, I've said it on our air on, on, uh, uh, ESPN Cleveland, that no head coach in his right mind would approve of that trade. The, 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 you always want the, the, the insurance of a, a, the end, right? I heard he didn't even know about it till the day of Stefanski. Yeah, I mean, he was telling us uh, outside the the building uh, that uh, uh, Josh Dobbs was definitely the number two quarterback as the season was going to kick off, and uh, Andrew Berry was upstairs making the trade. Um, I think he was against it. I think uh, AVP was against it. I think Deshaun Watson was against it. None of them will speak out about it. But the, the fact is, that they knew the risk. Th those people knew the risk. And, and the trade was still made. Um, <clears throat> and there was, there was no reason for it. I mean, it's not like they were bowled over by a, an offer they could not refuse. You know, it was a first-round pick. You can get one of those any any day, so um, and, and 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 it came back to haunt them, you know. And hopefully Watson gets back and and you know by in in by the end of the season this will be just a footnote in in the season. It could be a turning, it could be a turning point for the worst, or it could be a footnote. That that's up to Watson now to repair the damage once he gets in there. Why is it that you know Kevin Stefanski being the guy that he is, he's really tight-lipped on a lot of things, doesn't really say a lot in the media. But I think today or yesterday he comes out and says that, you know, Deshaun Watson was medically cleared to play, but he chose not to. Like, why would he choose to do that and kind of, to me, seem like that's kind of like throwing your quarterback under the bus a little bit to me. Yeah. Um, I was just, I was surprised, uh, Tyvus. Um, I think he was just being honest. 
I think Kevin has been honest. He he doesn't say a lot, but when he does say things, he, you know, he doesn't lie. He doesn't try to mislead. He just evades totally. But but when he doesn't evade, he's being honest, and and uh, I th- I think that's what he was doing. I don't think his intent was to throw Watson under the bus. I don't think, from what I've understand, I think Watson took it that way. Um, but yeah, it, it was a surprise that uh, you know he could he usually tiptoes and tip, tap dances around questions like that, you know. Uh, yeah, usually he would say I'm like not it's a, into that Tony or whatever. He, he usually know? say something like it's a it was an organizational decision or something like that. But he was just like yeah, that was like the first yeah. time because I like it, it makes you think of the Baker situation, you know, when you know he was cleared and he could yeah. talk about there and play, and it just mm-hmm. it was crazy to hear him just say it like that. Yeah. Well, remember during the Baker uh, uh, shoulder injury, he kept saying he was medically cleared to play too. On that one, I I think he just I I, I don't know I, I don't think he was trying to throw him under the bus. It, it came out that way, but fortunately, I don't think Watson uh, took it that way. Tony, are you but kind of going off of what Tavis was saying about what the comments? You know, I, I think it was Mike Florio that wrote about um, you know, and whether or not he's just trying to stir shit up or not, but kind of talked about how he praised Vansky praised Njoku as a warrior and playing with burns yeah. on his face and like, you know, and then kind of talking about how, you know, Deshaun was mighty good clear and he didn't like, do you think, is there anything behind that more than, or no? You know, I, I just don't think Kevin, the Kevin's DNA is like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know it comes across that way. I think he genuinely was, impressed by the courage that uh and joku showed in 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 having a good and being you know uh playing in the game after his accident this fire pit accident and uh i i don't think he I, again i i don't think kevin's made up that way uh to, to, to do that so i know it looks that way and mm-hmm. uh, the facts are what they are you know i mean he just stated the facts but uh, I'm, I'm going to say he's not like that. There are coaches who would play that up big. Um, I, 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 I'm not buying it that it was his intent to make even Watson look even worse by praising Njoku. Uh, I mean, there's too much on the line. He can't yeah. alienate <laughs> Watson. You know, it, 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 he's smart enough to know that. Tony, I read this article by Mary Kay today, and she was just basically talking about you know, the Jonathan Taylor, you know, he said that he's, uh, what did, what's the word? Undoubtedly of it. something he would love. He, he would welcome the Cleveland trade, you know, it with the running back room being the way that it is, obviously Jerome Ford, not, you know, being really at, at nobody's Nick Chubb, but they're not getting that same rushing progress from the, from the running backs. Do you think that this team should look into getting another running back in there and trading for one? It don't have to be Jonathan Taylor, but any type of running back? No, I, I don't. I, I, I'm i a big Jerome Ford fan. I think Hunt was a good acquisition, although he's going to take a while to get into football shape, it looks like. And I think this uh, third guy, Pierre Strong, showed that he's got some speed. You know, he showed in the 40-yard run. Uh, they have a running back by committee now. And – they, I don't think they want to, you know, put, get get a feature uh, uh, running back uh, to replace Chubb. I think as soon as the Chubb era is over, and I hope it isn't, you know, for a while. But I think that, I think the plan is to go running back by committee and not not put a star in the backfield with a star salary and all that. So now I don't believe any of the Jonathan Taylor stuff. Uh, it seems like whenever there's a player available, everyone immediately wants him on the Browns. You know, uh, <laughs> Devontae so Parker or, or Devontae Adams, and you know <laughs> he's mad at the Raiders. So you know, I don't know why that is, but every you know, I know why Browns fans do it, but the national media does it so often. They're like, well, the Browns are stupid; they'll take anybody. You know, <laughs> and I th- I think the law. <laughs> I think the long range plan in the backfield is to have a running back by committee like Kansas City does, Seattle, uh, uh, 
Philadelphia does and, and not have, you know, a, a, a number one superstar running back. So no, I'm, I'm not believing the Johnson Taylor discussion, just like I didn't think they'd ever go for uh, Hopkins, DeAndre Hopkins and uh, the Devante Adams or any other superstar, you know, uh, uh, Aaron Donald, you know, Everyone was, wants Aaron Donald. Oh, yeah, I'd love him too. They have salary cap restrictions because of this Watson contract for the next four years. So they can't acquire a new gigantic salary cap guy. They just can't. What about what about the quarterback room, Tony, now at this point? I mean, if if something happens with Watson again, right? If 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 God yeah. forbid he isn't ready with the 49ers. I mean, is, it's, is it just, <laughs> that's our game plan again, DTR? I mean, no, Holly, I think what they have to do is they have to get PJ Walker, some reps with the number one team and they got to make that switch. They got to make him uh, the, the, the backup quarterback. Uh, he's play, he started seven games in the league. I mean, he's no superstar of course, mm-hmm. but at least he's been there and done that. You cannot, lay the responsibility of, you know, of, again, a Super Bowl aspiring team on the shoulders of a fifth round rookie from UCLA. It's just mm-hmm. not fair to him or the rest of the team. So I think the first order of business is seeing if PJ Walker can fill that role. And um, we won't be at practice to see whether he's getting uh, reps with the, you know, he's been the scout team quarterback since they acquired him. Uh, uh, after the 53 cut. I think that's the first step to see if he can handle it. Um, and he, I think he should be able to. I mean, what the heck did they acquire him for? You know? Mm-hmm. So uh, we might see that move made uh, after the uh, bye week. Okay, let me take you to the offensive line because the left tackle spot, Jed Wills, obviously they picked up their his fifth-year option. Um, he's going to be there for this year, but – there is a couple of tackles. I'm thinking of the guy from Denver. What is his name? Gary Gary Bowles. Gary Bowles. Actually, I played. Oh. With I played with the guy, so I should know his name. He actually, <laughs> believe it or not, there was a time where he got booed in Denver. <laughs> they used to boo him because he used to like get a lot of penalties. But then he like became uh like all pro like the year later got paid. Anyways, that's a long story short. He's available for trade or he he's looking to get out of Denver. Should the Browns look into that? Okay, so what do you want him to do? Uh bench Jedrick Wills for, for Garrett Bowles? Is that what you're saying? Yep. Okay, so I I agree. I, I well, I, I I've said too, this. I, I can't. No, I no, can't no. stand I, Jed Wills. I don't agree with, He's terrible. I don't agree with with that. What I agree with is they need a veteran offensive lineman, just like they need a veteran quarterback. Um, I think Dewan Jones is doing fine at right well, tackle, and get, yeah, and getting better. Um, I don't think you're going to see. Uh, Will's uh, demoted. He's a 10th overall pick. They're guaranteeing him another, what, $13 million next year uh, and $5 million this year. They're, they're just not going to do that. But I do think there's a need for a backup offensive lineman, uh, offensive tackle with experience. But I, I don't think you're going to see Will demoted at all. Um, Sorry. I, I Listen, the, the funny thing about this this offseason has been that they have any problem that they had, they addressed it. They went out and they went and got it. Kicker was a problem, they addressed it. Uh, defensive line was a problem, they addressed it. So p- post safety was a problem, they addressed it. Defensive coordinator was a problem, they addressed it. Special teams coordinator was a problem, they, adjust, they addressed it. So it's unbelievable to think that on a year where you, you have to be all in on this season because if you don't, it's a lot of stuff that's going to happen not just from the coaching staff or players as well, for you not for you to be all in on the season. It's funny that you're willing to die on the hill of a left tackle that you drafted. I just think that's kind of funny. But, yeah, but they they made ahead. their commitment when they uh, picked up his fifth year option. They're they're not gonna they're not gonna demote him. They're they're telling Callahan get him up to speed, man. 
It's, yeah, so they, do better. So they just took thirteen million dollars between the left tackle, and then they paid Jack Conklin, who just blew his stuff out, who might not ever be the same yep. when he come back. So now you're paying two tackles for the next. What was this extension? Three years. Three years. You paying roughly what thirty million dollars to two tackles that ain't okay. Smart. Yeah. Great. <laughs> that yep. is um, great. <laughs> Tony, the defense was uh, pretty exposed. Um, this last game against the Ravens, um, giving up almost as many uh, yards as they have uh, throughout um, the season so far. Um, are you worried? No, I, I, you know, I was disappointed in that. I mean, you know, the, the, the quarterback situation called for the defense to go out and win the game, you know, and, and, and just like Pittsburgh's defense won their game, uh, against the Browns with two touchdowns. I know that's a lot to ask, but if you're a great defense, you do things like that. So I was disappointed that they came up far short of that. Um, but, yeah, you know, uh, not every game is going to be a, a record-breaking game mm-hmm. for the defense, and it just so happened. I, I think the defense was deflated uh, by the quarterback situation. I really do, although they started out uh, three and out, three and out. Um, but Lamar Jackson just wore him down in that second quarter. Well, I thought it was encouraging the second half. The Browns defense came out and, you know, didn't just die and just didn't give up. They played pretty good in the third quarter. Um, so I think it was just the culmination of those things. So, Holly, I still believe in them. Um, but they got to crank it up when, when called upon, you know. Defenses can win games still in this league, and, and, and I point out the Pittsburgh example. They, they've got to do things like that occasionally until this offense uh, gets rolling. All right, Tony, it's two, it's two people that's, you know, on a big contract year that's looking to get paid, and I got it's a two-part question. One, Dale Pitt and DPJ. Um, obviously, Dale Pitt has been playing really well. I think he's ranked like fourth in the PFF right now um, for safety play, which he's looked really good. DPJ, on the other hand, yeah. he hasn't got a lot of opportunities, so I don't know about you know what's going on with that situation there. So I'll let yeah. you touch on that. And then last, my last question about it is with them having for them kicking the can because they keep kicking, they keep sending the money down the line. We'll, we'll worry about it in a couple of years. At what point does that price tag come and they got to pay it and the Browns won't be able to afford anybody? Well, you know, just use the Rams as an example. You know, they they kicked the can to to win the Super Bowl and look what's happened to them. You know, they're they're rebuilding and, and, and you hope to do it fast like they've done it. You know, they had a terrible year last year and they're kind of respectable already this year. We're going to see them later in the year. There's no pushover. So uh, the goal is to get to the, keep, keep kicking it till your team gets in the Super Bowl, and then you pay your debt, you know, um, and you hope to recover as quickly as possible. Um, between Delpit and DPJ, I mean, let's be honest. If, if both of them go free agent, Delpit's going to be in huge demand. I don't think DPJ is. So uh, he – you know, I, I like them both. Uh, they've got to make a. They could make a decision soon on on uh, either one of them or both of them to avoid free agency. You know, once the season ends, both of them are gone mm-hmm. if they're not under contract. I, I'll guarantee that. Um, but but you're right with the, you know kicking this can kind of handcuffs them. I mean, kicking the can handcuffs them from investing in other players. So um, I'm sure they can make it work, though. But I, I would love to see Delta uh, re-sign before uh, the season's over, and that way you could reduce the salary cap problems, you know, by doing being proactive. And I, th- I think Andrew Barry is proactive, and I think he'll try to do that. Uh, Tony, I want to talk to you. Go back to Najoku for a minute. I I feel like with him, you know, he had he had season highs in targets and catches um even though snaps were down um this past game but I feel like I keep waiting for him like to have this breakout season like to have this breakout moment you know and it just doesn't seem to happen um yeah do you think he will ever get there 
are the Browns holding him back? What, where do you fall? Yeah, I think he's the most like untapped player on the team. What has a lot more to give than what they're asking so far. Um, part of that is, uh, the quarterback, you know, I mean, the quarterbacks, I mean, look at DTR found him seven out of eight times. Mm -hmm. Uh, Watson's got to look to him more. Uh, I, I don't think the coaches are writing Njoku out of the game plan, but, uh, I think, I think the quarterback has to utilize his tight end better instead of, uh, I mean, they over utilize his Harrison Bryant unbelievably (laughs) and, (laughs) Agreed. And then Joku is like <laughs> this guy's the mismatch king. He's, he's you know he's the the chief. Um, so yeah, I, I I think when they take this break and they you know look into what they're doing wrong, that's in the top five things. Well, okay, Tony, let's just let's call it like it is. After four games, this Browns team said two and two, one and two in the division. Are they still going to make playoffs? Um, I'm a big, uh, win the division guy. I, I could care less about the seventh seed, sixth seed. Those, those teams aren't going anywhere anyway. So I think their division hopes took a severe blow, uh, Sunday. Uh, I mean, they're one and two, mm-hmm. uh, Baltimore's down and, and they let them off the ropes. They left them up off the canvas and, and, and took a few hits from them. Uh, to me, you know, I don't want to write off the season after four weeks, but I think I think when we look back at it, this this loss to Baltimore is, is severe as far as division hopes, and as far as playoffs, you know, I don't I don't see the Browns winning more than nine games. I don't think nine and eight is going to do it. Is, will Kevin Stefanski be here? If they well, can. I was just going to say, so Tony, I, <laughs> I had dinner. I had dinner with my parents tonight and I was talking to my dad and I said, dad, I, I'm having Tony Grossi on the pod tonight. What do you want me to ask him? And he, that's what he said. He goes, D- depending on where the Browns are in a couple of weeks, is it possible that Jim Schwartz becomes head coach this, this season in season? In season. In season. Well, I think if, if disaster struck and they, and they made a change, I don't, what, would be the disaster, I don't think that's what would be the disaster that would strike that you think would take for that to happen? About five losses in a row, starting with the Sunday. Yeah. Um, and I don't see that happening. Yeah. But, um, okay, so Tigus's question is, you know, if they go nine and eight and, and finish third, let's say, what happens to Sopransky? I don't think, I don't think he loses his job over that. Um, it's got to be below 500 and it's got to be, uh, um, you know, it, 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 it's got to be worse than nine and eight. Let's put it that way. Um, they're too good to get much worse than that, but three losing seasons in a row is, is grounds for a change. But if he goes nine and eight, you know, and Baltimore pulls away, um, I, I think he's safe to be honest with you. Is that the right call? Uh, yeah, I I would. Yeah, I do think it is. Uh, I do. Um, you know what? The question is: Do you want Jim Harbaugh taking over? Do you want Jim Schwartz taking over? Um, I don't know. We'll revisit that in January if it comes to that. But you know, who you got better for the job? You know, is, is the next question, and uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure either one. Would, I, I love Jim Schwartz as a defensive coordinator. I don't. I think you lose something. His expertise as a head coach. He did go 0 16 as a head coach, didn't he? With the Lions, wasn't that him? Or did one? no? I don't think he went. Did he? Did he? He didn't go 0 16. That was before uh, he got there. Okay. That 0 16. Well, you might be right. That 0 16 <laughs> earned the Matthew Stafford. I mean, and then uh, looking it up. Oh, I just say hi. Look it up. I I don't think it. I don't think it. And he made the playoffs in his third year with Detroit. He won the uh, made the playoffs in his third year with Detroit. Mm. We don't need another zero sixteen coach. Oh, he's twenty nine. Uh, Rod Marinelli. Okay. Yeah, there you go. 
Yeah, he replaced Marinelli, right? Mm -hmm. He went he went two and fourteen. Then he went yeah, he went two and fourteen in two thousand and nine. And again, he went two and ten and well he was two and ten. Then he won four consecutive, so he finished six and ten. Yeah, it wasn't great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. he made I think he made the uh, the sixty three game. Here's the thing about this. The other thing, guys, about the Browns' uh, front office, they favor an offensive-minded head coach. And, you know, Schwartz is not that. But um, I, th I think he'd be the insurance policy if they made a change in, in the season. Uh, I, don't think, um, I don't think he'd be the leading contender if they make a change after the season. But, but it depends – yeah, if his de if his defense is lights out, and they make a head coaching change, Schwartz is going to go elsewhere. He's not going to work for another head coach, right? So that that's the problem there. So they, he might get the job that way, but uh, I don't I don't see it getting that bad, guys. Even me, look, look, I don't this see is up. Bad. This is where we live, Grossy, right in this pit because. The, it, that's where it ends. That's where it always ends, you know. No, I think, and it's. I, I think the Browns. I'm optimistic. I think the Browns can make the playoffs because I think it's a lot of. I think it's teams that's down in the AFC. I don't think it's it's as competitive as we thought. I think it's a lot of people that's off to slow starts, like Cincinnati, um, Kansas or not Kansas mm -hmm. City, uh, the Chargers, the Jets. Like those are three teams right there that you thought was going to be in the playoffs, and they're they're down right now. You're so. Right. I think that the Browns are have a good chance that they can find a way to pull it together. My only issue with the Browns right now really is the offensive line. I just, you know, for some for for a unit that we talked about is a lot of people never really quit outside of Jed Wills. Everybody had their questions about Jed Wills, but the rest of the offensive line, everybody was pretty solid on. And I I just feel like that the quarterbacks be under the rest a lot I, now don't get me wrong a lot of it could be on them for holding the ball but i promise you every time yeah. every time deshaun wise to drop back or dtr drop back it is pressure from that left mm -hmm. side every time and you gotta and deshaun Watson just does a great job of covering up because he avoids sacks but yeah i really don't think the pocket be that clean for him to be honest with you yeah well i i, I think the offensive line had a terrible game and that, uh, against uh uh Baltimore, I think that, that was a result of the uncertainty with the quarterback, and, and everything was messed up as, as a result of that. But they didn't play well in Pittsburgh either. Um, the 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 really bad thing I thought of Sunday was, you know, the pre-snap penalties on your home field. You you can't do that. I mean, it's excusable on the road because of the noise and stuff. You do that at home, and you're putting your rookie quarterback in a second and fifteen, and first and fifteen. That is that is a mortal sin. So they had a terrible game, but uh, I think with Watson in there, things will get a little more like normal. Tony, why is it that this this, this is it for me? I, I gotta know what you think because I think it was it was a couple of things wrong with the Browns last year. Obviously, defensively, I thought they were not great at all. Um, I didn't think they had leadership, and I thought they kind of gave up at times. And then I also thought offensively they had a bunch of penalties. Not offensively, but both on the team, period. They had a bunch of penalties, and offensively they had a bunch of turnovers. Why is it that they can fix the defense, but it's still turnovers and it's still penalties? When is it? When are they going to learn to not beat themselves? Offensively? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the the could be the key to the whole season, right? I mean, the, again, I I think the the Tennessee game was, you know, gave us hope that it was turning uh, because I thought Watson played a good game and and uh, they dominated. Uh, so we have to, you know, wait now to see if that was just a fluke or if it was the beginning of something. The, the setback. Uh, is, is not going to make it easy, you know, to recover from because you got San Francisco coming in now, and, th and then the schedule gets a little easier. But you're, I, 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 I know where you're going. I mean, this was supposed to be fireworks offensively, and they spent the whole off season in a laboratory doing everything that Watson wanted. And you know, Elijah Moore, my gosh, where, oh, what is going on there? Yeah, uh, Tony, yeah. uh, Ty has bought me a um, Elijah Moore jersey. And I think that might have been the death, might been the death of him. Of was season. he mocking him by doing that? <laughs> I was so excited for him, and I, I don't. What do you think his yeah. issue is? I don't know. You know, everyone 
in the media, those of us who are there every single day, we are all amazed of what's going on. I mean, to a man and a woman, we all felt this was the guy who was going to be the Browns fantasy king for all fantasy players. Mm -hmm. He was going to be putting up fantasy points all over the place. And we're all shocked. I'm shocked at what I see. Um, I, I, you know, I, we all overrated him, or they're just not in meshing, meshing with each other right now. I, I think we need more, more of a sample size, but I'm really shocked at what I've seen in four games. It's been horrific. It looks like uh, Demetri Felton, you know, and Riz Riz has said that on the air. And when he first started saying that, I was like, come on, don't do that. And it's looking more and more like that. Like that. I mean, yeah. I mean, do you think that, you know, Tyvis, you said last week that like, is there, is there more to it? I mean, was there issues with the Jets that like, you know, they got rid of them. You know what I mean? Like, is there something that we just didn't see? Yeah. Well, I, and, you know, let's face it, uh, Aaron Rodgers wanted two different guys in there, and they had to find room to bring them in. Uh, that had a lot to do with it. Uh, and, and Elijah Moore wanted out, and he wasn't the only one they got rid of, you know. But I, 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 don't, I don't know. If, I'm not, I don't think he's damaged goods. I, I just think, uh, the, you know what? I wish they'd just leave him as a slot receiver and, and develop him there first before they do all this other crazy stuff with him, which isn't working. Um, but, you know, the Browns haven't used a slot receiver for a while. I mean, it's always been two receivers and two tight ends or two backs. And now with the three receiver thing, the slot guy's important and he's never in the slot. He's always somewhere else. So I wish they would just go back to using him as the slot receiver. Why is it that oh, Deshaun Watson has – he only seems like to me, when I watch him play, because I like watching him tape, and I was like – for some odd reason, he got the timing down with him and Amari Cooper. But everybody else is not there. And for, for, for guys that throw all the time and go take these trips and go throw in all these other places, how is it that he only has chemistry with Amari – and not Elijah, but in camp, obviously they were connecting. You know, DPJ was connecting. But when you get in the game, yeah. it's just not like I like it was a time in Pittsburgh where I think Elijah Elijah ran. He was supposed to run a, a, a seven step spray out, and he ended up running a corner route. And it was a terrible ball by Deshaun. But it's just like the timing of everything is off. So is it like is he not running the routes where he's supposed to run it, or is it Deshaun holding the ball too long? Like what's going? But when, if you tell him to throw it to number two, it's like on time, right? In or in sync, it's perfect. Yeah. But anybody else is not. And what's what is that? Why is that? Yeah, I, uh, good question. I mean, um, okay. you know the intricacies of those routes a lot more than I do. Um, Cooper is just so good and and so professional and so you know that's his, that's his that's his forte route running right one of the best route runners in the league and apparently these other you know I I don't know the DPJ had chemistry with the other quarterbacks I've got to believe it's it's still the quarterback getting into the flow he's had one good game out of nine games you know with these guys They're going back to last year one good game and and. I, I think he needed to add to that. And, and then we had the Baltimore game. So, uh, well, I think the San Francisco game is going to be very important to see. Does he go back to square one or does he oh, pick off? Oh. I know. Yeah. It could get pretty bad, Tony. If we go back to square one, it's going to be a long game. Well, yeah. that's, that's a good segue to this last question for you, Tony, because you know, here we are, we got the, we're on the bye week. It's time to make some adjustments. Do you have faith that the Browns will make the right ones? And what is your prediction with San Francisco? Well, let's see. Stefanski is two and one out of coming out of bye weeks. They're usually later in the season. Um, this is the toughest opponent he'll face after a bye week. <laughs> I, I want to see what San Francisco does this week. They're totally healthy or not. <laughs> or, you know, Debo Samuel is coming off a, a ghost game where he did virtually nothing and they still won. Uh, <laughs> McCaffrey's been spectacular. I'm anxious to see the Schwartz defense against Brock Purdy. 
Um, I, I just think this. I just think until this offense starts doing the things that Titus wants to see him do, the the defense and special teams have to have to pick it up. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see the special teams contribute to a win for once. You know, do something. Um, defense has certainly done that in the two wins they do have. So uh, it's com- complimentary football, and right now the offense is still behind. But there's there's reason to believe it's coming on. But I don't know. Um, I know the Browns will be underdogs in this game against San Francisco. But let's see if let's see if before asking for my prediction, let's <laughs> let's see if Watson answers the bell and practice mm-hmm. next Wednesday and and see how San Francisco comes out of this last game. Who are they playing? They're playing uh, – San Francisco's playing uh, someone uh, in the East Coast uh, or in the Midwest. They are um, playing – They'll be a favorite in the game, I know that. They're playing the Cowboys. The Cowboys. Oh, the Cowboys, well. Well, that, if they beat the Cowboys, they'll come in Cleveland saying, "Well, this is this is nothing, man. We're five and zero. Maybe the Browns will catch them at the right time. Who I'll knows?" Tell you, I tell you what, they, I, I I'd be shocked if this game will be a lot closer than a lot of people think. I think it'll come down to the to the fourth quarter. Um, as good as as good as the 49ers is, I do believe from a defensive standpoint versus their offense and the way that the defense is playing that they will keep them in the game. And it's just going to come. The, the biggest key to the game is Jed Wills on Nick Bosa. That that right there is like pretty much the game. If, they, if Jed Wills can find a way. Oh, that's scary. It, I know. that They they might have to throw a tight end down on that side. I, I know they want to help DeJuan. Well, yeah. But they got to flip it this this game. You got to put somebody on that side with Nick Bosa. Um, if he can buy some time, I think that they good enough to at least buy some time and be able to make some plays. Well, if it's Nick Bosa versus Jedrick Wills, I don't think we're going to be putting much money on the Browns. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. Um, well, let's hope that uh, we're we're in a good spot by the time uh, San Francisco comes in here. So, uh, yeah. Tony, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm 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 nervous. I'll be honest. I just. I just am. About I just the whole season? Yeah, I just don't like the way that how things went down last week. It was very old Brownsy, and I just yeah. And I'm I'm I just they really need to make the the right adjustments over these the over this week. Yes, yeah. I I just I don't like it. Well, it's not sitting with me well. I think the first step of that is Watson getting back in there and playing, and uh, all systems are go for that. So that's a start. That is a start. All right. Well, for uh, Tavis Powell and Taj, our producer, and our amazing guest, Tony Grossi, the general uh, Cleveland Browns analyst for many, many years. Um, not too many. I'm not aging, Tony. Don't worry. Um, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> um, I'll, look, look- I'll look for the swag in the office, Holly. <laughs> I will. Don't. Hey, by the way, this is totally not for this podcast, but Tony. Um, we got a cool website for uh, for new gear for for us, so I'll have to send it to you. We got to pay for it. I've though. seen that memo. Yeah, I got to take a look at that. Uh, me too. I got some stuff in my cart already, so. Good. <laughs> it burns a hole in my pocket, money does, so. All right. Um, well, we will be back next week. Um, uh, this is the Orange is Oranger. And Tavis, do you want to take us out? We was down last week, but you know what? After every rainstorm, it's a brighter day, and the Browns will be back. Deshaun Watson will be healthy again. They're going to figure out the way to run the ball, and the Brownies is back. Listen, I'm down with the dog pound. So here we go, Brownies. Here we go.